Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Night Market. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules of the game as we play it, and I will be showing the first out of four overall rounds. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with great bonuses, like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. And I will also put relevant corrections in a pinned comment below this video. The other thing I'd like to mention is that I'm filming with a prototype version of the game, so the art and components that you see here may not exactly match those in the final release. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. As you can see, we have a map of Taipei City out here, and over there it shows the four seasons of the game. Now within each season we will have one round, and in each round we will have a day phase and then a night phase before we go into upkeep and then move on to the next season. Now during the day phase, players are going to go in order, placing their workers out into various districts within Taipei City. After that, they will gain a good based off of the spot they are at, or if it's a Red Lantern spot, they can take special actions. In addition to that, workers of the same color can combo off each other to gain bonus goods for that player. This happens whenever the worker placed is in a line of three of that colored workers on the diagonal or orthogonal, and you also gain bonus goods when there is a single space between your placed workers out here orthogonally or diagonally. Now, I'll explain the details of how that works later, but you'll see how a single worker can generate multiple goods for players. Now, I did mention that when a worker lands on a Red Lantern district, they can take a Red Lantern action instead of taking goods. As you can see, there are three of those, allowing players to hire chefs, which will stay out on the districts for the rest of the game, generating goods. They can also build out new stalls into their specific night market, and they can attract new customers that will go down here, and these are the customers that will end up eating the goods that the player gains. Now, once the day phase is over, we go into the night phase, where players will take all of their goods and place them down onto available spots within the stalls of their night market, as well as potentially onto storage and delivery tiles to the right. Once all of the goods are placed, each player can then have their customers visit the market and pick up the goods that they want that match the specific criteria on that card and the specific locations, so this customer will only buy bubble tea in this location and that location over there. Now, based off of the goods that that customer buys from the night market, the player will generate money, and money can be spent on various upgrades, and it's also worth some victory points at the end of the game. Once each player has finished simultaneously having all of their customers visit their night markets, players will check to see who did the best at a specific round goal, and then in that order, players can gain these beneficial season attraction tiles from the board. After that, all of the non-chef workers are removed, we do some other upkeep, and then we can move into the next season of the game with a day phase where we once again place workers out. Once we have completed four full rounds, players will count up their victory points, and the player with the most points will be the winner. Now, I'll describe the details of how all of these things work when we bump into them while playing, and speaking of that, I think let's now start playing the game. Now, for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the red player down here, and at this moment, we are starting off the spring season, and the first part of that season involves performing a day phase. During the day phase, players will go in this order, placing a single one of their five workers out onto a district that does not currently have any meeples on it. And we are currently the starting player, so let's place our first worker out into Taipei City. When we focus over here, I do want to point out that the number of districts available will vary with the player count. This is set up for a three-player game, and if this was a four-player game, then we would also have districts on these locations there. I'd also like to mention that these spots will end up having new district tiles placed into them as we progress through the game, and finally, these corner spots with the greenery are just there for decoration. If this was a four-player game, then these corners would also be filled in throughout the game. Now that means right now, these are the districts that are available, and as I said, this worker can only go down onto a spot that currently has no other workers of any player color. Now I think for this first action, let's head over to this purple district. So let's focus on this tile, and as you can see, it shows a bubble T icon in the bottom. Now that means the only thing that this worker can do in this district is pick up one bubble T good from the supply, so let's go ahead and take that. Now if we'd placed onto a district that had a red lantern in the top right corner, then instead of taking that good, we could perform a red lantern action, and I'll talk about how those work very soon. So we have taken the one bubble T from this placement, and we can now simply put it in front of us off to the side of our board. 
Now, I did mention that it's possible to gain combos from placing the workers out into the districts, and I'll talk about the details of those soon. And for the moment, we have finished our turn because we've placed one worker. This means it's now time for the blue player to go, so they're going to place one of their workers out into an empty district. And they've decided to head over here. There is no red lantern, which means the only thing they can do here is pick up that specific good, and in this case, that is going to be one sticky tofu. They can place that in front of them, and now the yellow player can put one of their workers out into a district. And they have decided to go here, where they are going to gain one sausage good. That's finished their turn, which means we can once again come back around to us, and we now place our second worker of the game. Before this placement, I do think we should talk about combos now. There are two different types of combos in the game, and the first one involves placing a worker down so that there is exactly one district tile between that newly placed worker and another worker of that player color. If this happens, then the worker that was placed will perform actions on this tile as normal, but then they will also gain the good that is depicted on the tile that is one space between them. That means if we placed over here, we would get sausage as well as one bubble tea, and we could also place up there as a different option. As you can see, there is one district between these two spots on the diagonal, which is just fine, and in that case, we would get one chicken steak good as well as a stinky tofu. You'll notice there is a blue worker there, but that would not stop us from gaining this sticky tofu as a combo. Now, when you place a worker down, you can activate multiple combos. If we put this here and in the future place that over there, then we would get a combo bonus from that spot and from that spot there. And obviously, our opponents can see us trying to put this sort of thing together and might want to try to block it. Now, there is one other type of combo, which involves placing three workers of the same color in a row on orthogonal or diagonal lines. For example, if we went here on this turn and gained this and that as a combo, and then on our next turn this was still open, we could place that worker there, and then the other two workers in that line will activate, making the goods that are printed underneath them. So, to show a more complicated example, if this worker was there and we placed that onto this location, we would have a combo from these three, which means we'd get a bubble tea as well as a sausage from that. We would perform actions as normal on this spot, which means we could gain a bubble tea or perform a red lantern action, and we would get a combo from this worker here, generating a bubble tea as well. So that means by placing this here, we would be guaranteed to get two bubble tea as well as a sausage, and potentially a third bubble tea or that red lantern action. The final thing to say about combos is that when you place down and activate a combo on a district with a red lantern action on it, you cannot take that action. You only ever gain goods when you activate a combo. Well, we have seen some good options out here, and I do think this is a good spot for us. So let's land over there and get one sausage, and then the combo will activate with this one district between these two, which means we will also get another bubble tea. Now, I'm sure you are wondering why we are picking up these specific goods, and that has to do with our customer. Now, we can have up to four customers in front of us at any point in the game, and at the start of the game, we picked up this customer here. Now, that customer wants to buy bubble tea, as well as pair that up with sausage and potentially chicken steaks, and I'll talk about the details of how the specific buying process works, but this is why we are trying to get multiple bubble teas, as well as sausage. At this point, I do think we also want to pick up a chicken steak before the day phase is over. Blue is next, and we can see that their starting customer wants to purchase quite a few sticky tofu, and they also don't mind buying other things in those specific spots. Again, I'll go into the specifics of that during the night phase, so for now they are going to head out to a district. Now I will tell you that Blue is planning on going over here on this turn, and then they were hoping to go over there on a future turn to get a three in a row, which would get them a whole bunch of sticky tofu goods. Obviously, we blocked that already, though, so instead, Blue has decided to go onto this spot here. Now, by doing that, they have stopped us from being able to get a nice three in a row there, and they've also stopped the yellow player from being able to go there, where they would have gained a bonus sausage, which is certainly something they want. Now, by placing here, we can see there is a red lantern in the top red corner, and whenever you place a worker of any kind onto a district with a red lantern, that player has to pay the red lantern fee. Now that fee is zero money for the first Red Lantern district entered within a day phase, five money for the next, ten money after that, and so on. So that means right now Blue does not pay anything, but if they place a worker into any other Red Lanterns later on in this day phase, it will cost five or more money for each subsequent placement, even if the player does not end up doing a Red Lantern action with that placement. Now, by going over here, they obviously pay nothing since this is their first Red Lantern tile, and now they could either gain Bubble Tea or they could perform a Red Lantern action, and that is what they've decided to do. 
In order to do this, Blue can focus on the bottom left corner of their playing area, where the three different Red Lantern actions are shown. Now they can choose one of these to perform right now, and they have decided to hire a chef. Now, as you can see, there are three of these chef workers on the board, and there is a money cost underneath. And when you hire a chef, you take the leftmost one that is still there, and then you pay that amount of money to the bank. At the beginning of the game, all players gained 25 money, so that means Blue can spend 15 of that, leaving them with 10 left over, and then they can immediately place this chef out into Taipei City. Now this chef placement works the same way as regular worker placements, with the only exception that when a chef goes onto a location, it can never activate a Red Lantern ability, it will always just gain the good that is printed on that district. In this case, Blue wants to place that chef over there, and by doing that they have created a three in a row combo. As I said, these chefs must always gain the good printed on that tile, so that means they will get one mochi from this, and then since this is a three in a row combo, they will also get one stinky tofu and another mochi. Now it's worth noting, if in the future they placed a worker down here, then they would still only get a three combo, taking bonuses from the closest two workers in that line. So, by placing that chef out, they gained all three of these goods, and it's worth noting that chefs never actually leave Taipei City once they are placed out here. Instead, at the end of each season, they will stay where they are or move on to a new location, and I'll describe the details of how that works later on. Now, at this point, Blue is done with their turn, which means Yellow can place, and they're going to put a worker over there. That does not currently make a combo, but they could get a three-in-a-row combo by placing there later on in the round if it's available. That spot is going to gain them one sausage, and that's finished their turn. This means it's time for us to go again, and we do still have three workers to place, and we also have our 25 money that we started with at the beginning of the game. I think spending that money will be a good idea, and let's place up here. That is a Red Lantern District, and it's the first one that we have placed on, so that means we do not have to pay any money. Now it's worth noting, if you have a chef on a Red Lantern District, that will count for the penalty for future Red Lantern District placements. In this case, that is not what's happening for us, and now since we placed over here, we will gain one mochi as a combo, because that's on the single district between our newly placed worker and the previously placed one. After that, we can gain a chicken steak or perform a Red Lantern action, and I think let's go for the Red Lantern action. With this action, we could hire a chef like the blue player did, or we could build a stall or attract a new customer. Now, I think we want to attract a new customer at this point, and what that means is we will take a new one from the customer supply. As you can see, there are three customers over here and another one at the top of this deck, and all four of these are options for us. Now, I think we want to take this one here, so we can remove it from that supply, and then we can replace that spot with the top card from the deck. After that, we have to add this card into our customer row, and when we place this down, we have to pay any cost that is covered. Now, this says 5, 10, and 15 money, and obviously it makes sense to cover the lowest value right now, so that means we have to pay 5 money to place that customer there, and now both of these customers will visit our night market once this day phase is over, and we are hoping to set it up so that each of them will pay us a bunch of money for the goods we have. Well, our turn is done, which means blue gets to go again. After considering their options, they're going to go over here. Now that is the second Red Lantern that currently has their workers on it, so that means they have to pay 5 money to the bank to do that. At the moment they have 10 money, so they can spend that and get 5 money back. And now we can see they will once again get a line combo for these three workers. Now this one is going to get them a sticky tofu, and that one will get them bubble tea. And then after that, they can gain a chicken steak, or they could perform another Red Lantern action, and that is what they're going to do. At the moment, Blue has five money left, which means they cannot afford to hire their next chef, but they could attract a customer over here, or they could build new stalls. Now that is what they've decided to do, and the amount of money they have to spend is equal to the price underneath this cube. So that means they have to spend their last five money in order to buy two new stalls that will then be permanently added into their night market. With that in mind, we can focus over here on the stalls market. Now the blue player can take any two of these stalls, and as you can see, there are four different colors up top, and then a stack down here of generic stalls. Now these four colors match up with the four different specialty dishes that players will make if they have this amount of those goods anywhere on their night market board. That means if the blue player was to take this one right here, and then they had four bubble tea goods anywhere in their night market, this would generate a mochi special dish. 
Now this has a four on it, and the one above it has a three. So you only need three of the bubble tea to make a mochi with that tile, but this tile can only hold one good. And if there's a good on there, you can't actually add that specialty good on top of it. So they've decided to go for this one. Uh, they can also take one more, and you can see down below, these have a five on it, which means it takes more of that good to make the specialty dish, but they also have more storage spots, which means you can hold more goods that your customers can then buy. In this case, Blue is going to keep their options open and take another one of these fours. As you can see, there is a single one of the threes, two of the fours, and three of those actually started on our boards, and then there are two each of the fives. After that, Blue can add these two stalls down onto any of the empty slots in their night market, and they're going to put them like this. And it's worth noting that once these are built, they will stay there for the rest of the game. The final part of the Build Stalls Red Lantern action involves moving this token forward once so that the next time the blue player builds stalls, it will cost 10 money instead of 5, and as you can see, you can only perform 4 of these Build Stall actions throughout the entire game. At this point, you may be wondering what these symbols are, and those are endgame victory points that players will get if they get that Red Lantern action all the way to the end. So if you are able to do four build stalls action, that will give two points. And if you hire all three of your chefs, that will give two points. And if you end the game with four satisfied customers, you will get two points. Now we haven't discussed satisfying these customers just yet, and I will get to that later on in the tutorial when we are talking about the night market. Well, the blue player's turn is done, which means yellow can go. And they've decided to go over here to take advantage of this three in a row combo. Now that is going to get them one bubble tea, and then each of these will get them one sausage. So that is two sausage and one bubble tea for placing that single worker up there. After that, we can go, and I think let's place onto this spot here. That does have a red lantern, and this is the second red lantern our workers are on. So that means that will cost us five money. Remember, every subsequent red lantern after the first one will be five more money. So if we go onto a third one later on in this round, that would cost us ten. At the moment, we have 20 money total, though, so we can easily spend 5 of it. And that means we have 15 left over. Now, after that, we can see that we get two different bonus goods because we have a combo with this worker here because that tile is between the two. That is going to get us a chicken steak. And then this tile is also between these two here, so that will get us a sausage. After taking these goods, we can gain a sticky tofu or perform a red lantern action, and I think that is what we want to do. Now, I think what we want to do is buy stalls. The reason for that is because these customers will only purchase these goods from those specific locations on our night market. And as you can see, this customer would like to purchase from these two spots, as well as these locations here. And right now, there are no stalls in those locations. So I think let's fix that by purchasing stalls. That is going to cost us five of our money. And now we can add two to our board. Now, I think we want to take one of these fives just so that we can store more things and potentially sell more things from that location. And let's go ahead and take another one that is going to make mochi from bubble tea. I know I haven't really described why we want these specialty dishes just yet, but I will get to that soon. Now, let's go ahead and take a four as well, and we'll grab this one. And of course, we want to add it into that location there so that those two spots can have these goods that we can then sell to this customer. Now, the actual color of these stalls does not matter when it comes to the food that you can put on them, so I think these two spots are going to be just fine. All right, that's finished our turn, which means blue can go, and they are going to place over there. That will get them a sticky tofu, as well as two combos, because these are one away from another one of their workers. So that will get them a chicken steak, and this one right here will get them some bubble tea. Well, the yellow player now gets to go, and after considering their options, they are going to go way down here. Now, this is not going to get them any combos, and it does have a Red Lantern on it. This is the first Red Lantern they have workers on, so that will cost them nothing, and they are going to perform a Red Lantern action. The one they have decided on is adding a new customer, and they would like to add this customer right here. After that, that hole will be filled in with a new customer from the top of the deck, and then this is going to cost them five money. After that, we can go, and this is our final worker for the day phase. Now, what we want is one more mochi and at least one more of the chicken steaks. And we do currently have 10 money, so if we needed to land on a red lantern to pull this off, we could. 
Now we could go there, that would cost the 10 money, and we would then be able to get sausage as well as this uh, bubble tea, that chicken steak, and that sticky tofu over there because of the three combos. Unfortunately, that would just be one chicken steak, and I was hoping to pick up two as well as a bubble tea, and I don't see a way to pull that off with this last worker. In addition to that, I'm not finding any non-red lantern spots that get us a bubble tea as well as a chicken steak, so let's just go over here and pick up that one bubble tea. Our turn is done, so blue can go. And realistically, they don't need any more goods to satisfy their only customer, so they're just going to go over here and pick up one more chicken steak. After that, yellow can place the final worker of this day phase, and they're going to go up here, and that is going to get them a sticky tofu, and they do not have any combos, so they don't get any bonuses. After that, we can see that there are no more workers available for any players, which means the day phase has come to an end. This means we can shift into the night phase for this first season of the game, and the night phase can be played fully simultaneously, so all players can sell to their customers at the same time. Now with that being said, I will show you what all three of us do. So let's start things over here with us. Now the first thing that we do is we gather up all of our goods. Those can be the goods over here off to the side, as well as potential goods on our storage tiles over here, which I haven't covered just yet, but I will talk about later. Obviously, we have no goods on those storage tiles, so we are now ready to place these goods into our night market stalls. Now, as I mentioned before, once we have placed all of these goods, these customers will buy those goods, and the specific positioning is very important. We can start with this customer here, and we see that they want to buy a bubble tea in this location and a bubble tea on that location. But in addition to that, you'll notice these little plus signs over there. Now that says that they will also buy a sausage as long as they've purchased bubble tea. Those have to be a pair. And in this case, this one says they will also buy a chicken steak if they purchased a bubble tea to go along with it. Now you don't have to pair these up like that. You could sell those two, but you would not be able to sell the sausage or the chicken steak if you sold no bubble tea. Now this one down here is similar with the pluses. It has bubble tea paired up with the chicken steak. Now what this means is we should place this bubble tea out onto these spots so that each of these customers can buy as much of it as possible. So this customer will buy bubble tea in these two locations, and this customer wants to buy bubble tea in those two locations. So now all four of those will hypothetically be taken. Next up we have these over here, and we know that this has a pair for the sausage. So if we place that over there, then this customer should purchase that as well. And then for similar reasons, we can place the chicken steak down over there. Now the reason we are doing all of this is because the customer will pay money for the goods that are in the correct stalls. You can see that each of these will pay three money for just bubble tea, or if we sell them a pair of bubble tea plus the other thing that they are looking for, that will be eight money for the pair instead of the three for the one bubble tea. Now I think that is the best that we can do, and we do have one excess sausage which can stay over here. Now before we move on, it's time to prepare specialty dishes. I briefly mentioned this before, but let's once again look at these stalls that have the colors in the corners. Now this stall over here says that if we have four bubble tea on any of the stalls in our night market, then instead of placing any good on that spot, which you could do, you can create a mochi special dish, which we can take from the supply and put down onto that specific spot there on the board. You can see the shape matches up. Now, if we were to have five additional bubble tea, we could place another mochi special dish over there. So it would be nine bubble tea needed to place mochi onto each of these. If we had four of the sausage, we would be able to create a beef noodle specialty dish. But at the moment, we have just one sausage in our market. Once we have placed all of our goods and prepared all of our specialty dishes, we can then move on to selling these to the customers. And at this point, we are no longer allowed to add anything to our night market. Now, when we sell to the customers, we can sell to them in any order of our choosing. But once we have started selling to a customer, we have to complete all sales with that customer before we move on to another one. In this case, let's start with this customer here. Now, once again, they want to purchase bubble tea from these two spots. And it's worth noting that they will only purchase one from each of these spots. So even though we are doubled up on that spot there, this customer will only purchase one of those. In addition to that, they want to pair up their bubble tea with chicken steaks that can be on these locations here. So what that means is we can take this bubble tea and that chicken steak and place them on top of this card. Now at this point, we could also sell them this bubble tea, so I think we should. And at this point, there are no more chicken steaks in either of these locations, so those are all of the goods that this customer will be purchasing. After that, you'll notice in the top right corner of these customers, there is the specialty dish that they are also interested in purchasing. 
both of these want mochi, which is maybe not the best decision on our part, but either way, we can sell one mochi to each of these customers, and we have made one mochi, so we can show them buying it by taking that mochi from the stall and placing it there onto the cart. At this point, we are done selling to this customer, so we can now sell to that customer, and they want bubble tea in these two spots, and they also want chicken steak from this spot and sausage from that one. Obviously, we don't have any more chicken steak, which is unfortunate, but we do have the two bubble tea and the one sausage, so we can place those down onto the card. After that, they would also like to purchase mochi, but we don't have any more mochi out here in the market, so they are now done purchasing. Well, it's now time to collect the money that we got from these purchases, and technically you can do this after each individual customer is done. In this case, we can see that this customer is going to pay three money for each of the bubble teas, or eight money for a bubble tea paired with something else. So they have one pair and one solo bubble tea, and that means we will get eight plus three, or 11 money from this customer. Likewise, over here, we have the same situation with a pair and a single, so that is 11 more money, plus we sold them one specialty dish. When we look up to the menu part of our player board, you can see that at this point, specialty dishes will be sold for 10 money each. So that means we can sell this one for 10 money, and when we add that to the rest of our sales, we will end up getting 32 money total. After that, we can adjust our signature dish popularity, because the more of each signature dish that we sell, the more popular we become for that dish. Now in this case, we sold mochi, and you can see that one heart over there. That means for every mochi that we sell to this customer, we will gain one heart, and it is worth noting that this customer would only purchase up to one mochi. Now that means one heart is going to move that token over once on the mochi row, and when that reaches this spot, you'll notice it says $12 for specialty dishes instead of 10. Now we can track that by taking this token over here and replace that spot. So that means in the next night phase, we will get 12 money for each of our specialty dishes instead of 10. If we get this token all the way up to that spot, we can flip this over and then sell those specialty dishes for 15 money each. And after we go beyond that, this simply tells us how many points we will get at the end of the game for the token being on that location. So at the moment, this is over there. And we can take our 32 money and add it to the money that we already had. At this point, we can check to see if we sold out the night market. And what this means is if we have no goods or specialty dishes in our market, as well as no goods in our supply, and no goods on these storage tiles, which we don't currently have, then we would have sold out. As you can see, we have none here, none there, but one sausage over there, so that means we have not sold out. This is unfortunate because when you sell out, you get a bonus of moving this token down, and you gain those bonuses, and I'll talk about what those do soon. After that, it's time to get rid of all of the goods in our supply, as well as any goods or specialty items in our market. And over here on the storage tiles, we would keep any on the storage side and get rid of any on the delivery side. Once again, I'll talk about storage and delivery in detail later on in the tutorial. For the moment, let's leave this stuff on our customers, and now let's see what our opponents did at the same time we were selling to our night market. Well, let's focus over here for the blue player, and they have just one customer who is looking for sticky tofu in these four areas and any other types of goods in these areas over there, and they also would like to buy a soup dumpling specialty dish. Now, they are going to place three of these sticky tofu over there, and then after that, they are going to place three mochi over there, and then they'll take another sticky tofu and place it onto that spot. Now they have four sticky tofu in their market, which means they will make one of the soup dumpling specialty dish, and they can place that onto this open spot on that stall. After that, they do have three goods left over here, and there really isn't a reason to add them to their market, so they are not going to. Now if they had storage and or delivery tiles, they could place those on there, but they do not currently, so now it's time for them to sell to their customer. Once again, this customer will buy up to one sticky tofu from these four regions, so that means all three of these will be sold, and then they will buy up to one of anything from those four regions, so they are going to buy all of these bubble teas. Now they do want to purchase one soup dumpling, and there is one out there, and at this point, that is the maximum that they are able to purchase because they don't have stalls in these two locations here. So they can now gain money from this sale. As you can see, every sticky tofu they sell to this customer will get them three money, and every other type of good that they sell will get them two, and then this one specialty dish will get them 10 money. This means all told they got 25 money, and then when we look at this dish, 
We can see it has one heart, which means since they sold this one soup dumpling, it will go up once on the soup dumpling specialty dish popularity track. As you can see, that is right over here, and when they move this token onto that spot, they are going to gain 5 money from the bank, and they will gain one of these loyal customer tokens. Now this token can be immediately placed onto any of their customers, or set off to the side to be placed later on, and I think they're going to put it off to the side. I'll explain why they want to use this one near the end of this round. After that, we can see they have certainly not sold out. They have an excess good over there and three in their personal supply, and all of these will be returned to the main supply. After that, let's see what yellow does during their night phase. They have one customer that wants to buy up to one sausage from all four of these central regions, and you'll notice that they don't actually pay that much for the sausage, just one money each. Now, the reason that this customer is good for the yellow player is because if they end up buying one of the beef soup specialty dishes, they will get two hearts on that track instead of one for that specialty dish. Now their other customer wants to buy sticky tofu from these four regions, and they can put that one there, as well as anything from those four regions, so they will put this bubble tea up there. Now this customer would give them one heart if they were able to sell them one soup dumpling specialty dish. Speaking of specialty dishes, they are now going to gain one beef noodle specialty dish, because they do indeed have four of the sausage goods out here in their night market, which is what they need to make that dish right over into that stall. Well, it's now time for them to sell to their customers, and this customer is going to buy this bubble tea as well as this sticky tofu, and then that customer is going to buy one sausage from each of the central stalls, and then they also want to buy a beef noodle specialty dish, which they can do. When we look down here, this customer is going to pay 10 money for this specialty dish, as well as one, two, three, four more money, so that's 14 here, and then that customer will pay three money for sticky tofu and one money for anything else. So that is four more money for this customer. All told, that means they only got 18 money over here. That might not seem great compared to the rest of us, but we can now see that they are going to move up twice on the beef noodle specialty dish chart because they have these two hearts over there. Now, whenever they cross over these stars, that will let them upgrade one of their stalls, and they are going to go up twice on this track. So, they are going to upgrade one of their stalls, and they are one heart on that track away from upgrading a second. Now, the way you upgrade a stall is by flipping it over, and they've decided to upgrade this stall here. When that happens, you'll notice it goes from being a two-storage spot with a four on it to a two-storage spot with a three. That means it just takes three sausage to make this beef noodle specialty dish instead of four, and this is worth one victory point to them at the end of the game. After that, when we focus out, we can see that they are indeed sold out, because they have no goods or specialty dishes here, or in their storage, or in their personal area. That means this token is going to move down once, and you'll notice it does have a star on it, and that means they can once again upgrade one of their stalls. Now, in this case, they are going to upgrade this stall here, and as you can see, it goes from holding four things to holding four things plus a point, and it has this blue frost icon in the bottom, which means they can take one of these storage slash delivery tiles and place it face up on their board. As you can see, there are five of them, and four of them are associated with the four goods that come in the game. Now, the way these tiles work is once they are out here on the board, when you are placing your goods out into your night market, you can also place them down onto these tiles. Now, this one is really simple. You can place one good onto that, and it will then be sent out for delivery, and you will get one money for that. The rest of these have a delivery spot, which works the same way, but it must be a specific type of good that you get one coin for, and the other side is storage. Now, the way storage works is you can place a good down of that matching type, and then it will stay there until the next round, and in fact, you'll get a bonus good of that type during upkeep, and I'll mention that again soon when we are going through the upkeep step. In this case, the yellow player has decided to take that tile, and they will place it up here, and you'll notice that if you manage to place all five of these out by the end of the game, you'll get two points, and again, the only way you place these out is by upgrading these blue four-space general stalls. Well, at this point, I would now like to talk about customer satisfaction. This is something that we are going to check for each individual customer, and it has to do with the icons in the bottom right corner of their cards. The way this works is each individual customer will become satisfied if they have this number of goods on top of their card or more. As you can see, this one has three, which is two or more, and every time you satisfy a customer, you will flip them over. 
Now, as you can see, the background went from the current season, which is spring, to the next season, which is summer. And this also says we will get one point at the end of the game, whether or not this customer is still out here or off in a discard pile in front of us. Now we can see that we have satisfied both of these customers because this one also needed two or more. So we can flip that over, and it is important to keep all of this stuff in front of us for checking the season bonus, which we will cover very soon. Over here, we can see that this customer is very satisfied with six goods on them, and they just needed two or more. And then both of these customers are also satisfied, this one just barely so. At this point, it's now time to check the seasonal goal to see how each player did compared to that specific objective. Now, I haven't talked about this just yet, but this one is pretty straightforward. It is randomly put out during setup, and that says that the player who has sold the most items will get the best reward, and then we are going to work from that player on backwards. Now, each of the players in that order will be able to take attraction tiles from this column. Well, it looks like we sold six goods, Blue also sold six goods, and so did the yellow player, which means we have a tie. In order to break the tie, we then check to see who made the most money in the season. If there is still a tie, then we check to see who sold the most individual goods, which is obviously the case for this main goal. And if there is still a tie, then we check the current player order and break it in that order. Now, when it comes to selling to customers, we made 32 money, blue made 25, and yellow made 18. So that means we did the best, blue is in second, and yellow is in third. That means we get first pick at taking one of these four attraction tiles that we then have to add into our night market. Now, this one up here would let us upgrade one of our stalls, and we've already seen how that works. This one right over here is just worth two victory points at the end of the game, and that one is a special stall where you can place any one good to be sold to a customer, or this could duplicate the signature dish option on a different stall in your night market. Now, in order to make that happen, you do have to have the specific goods that match up with the stall that you're duplicating, in addition to goods that you have already assigned to the stall that is being duplicated. The final one would give a plus one truck, and during the upkeep phase, these trucks will let players take goods equal to that number from the supply in any variety of their choice. In fact, if we look back at our menu, we will also gain trucks when we are able to push this token forward for selling shaved ice to players, and obviously we have not seen that happen just yet. Well, out of all of these, I think I like this one the best for us. The final thing that we have to do is take our turn order marker and go all the way to the back. That means the turn order for the next round will be the inverse of the order in which we take the attraction tiles in the previous night phase. Well, blue is next, and they are going to take this, which will let them upgrade one of their tiles, and they are going to be in second place in the next season. They've decided to place this there, and they are going to upgrade this stall so that they can add a storage slash delivery tile. In this case, they've decided to pick this one, which lets them store up to one chicken steak, and they can also send up to one chicken steak out to gain them one money. Finally, the yellow player can pick from these two options, and they are going to take this truck. They are going to put it right down over there, and this means they can take this truck in their area with a plus one on it and place it onto their board. You'll notice this truck is double-sided, and there are several other truck tokens that let you track how many goods you can take from these trucks all the way up to a maximum of eight if you take all of the truck bonuses that are available in the game. After that, we can see that yellow will go first in the next round, and now the night phase is over. This means we've reached the third phase of the season called upkeep, and the first thing that we do is get rid of all of the goods and specialty dishes that were sold to each of these customers, and we add all of this back to the main supply. The next thing that we do is remove all customers in front of players that have a season showing on them that does not match the next season of the game. We just finished spring, so we are moving into summer, and if any of these customers showed spring still, then they would be removed. Now, obviously, all of these show summer because they were all satisfied, but you'll note these cannot be flipped over again to the fall. That means even if these customers buy as much as possible, they will still not match up with fall, and they will be removed at the end of the next night phase. Now, there is one exception to that, and that is this customer loyalty token. Now, you can place this down onto any of your customers once you have one of these available, and once this is on that customer, that customer will effectively match all seasons, and they will stay there until the end of the game unless the player decides they want to get rid of that customer. Obviously, keeping specific customers around is great because you are hypothetically building your night market to match that customer's needs, and the longer you can keep them around, the better you can get the benefits for matching up those needs. The final thing to say is that if you remove customers that were flipped over to their satisfied side, you do still keep them over near your area, and you will get those points at the end of the game. 
The next thing that we do is remove all customers from the previous season from the market, and then we also remove them from the top of this deck until we reach the next season. Then we are going to reveal three of these so that there are four customers face up for players to attract towards their night markets during the next season of the game. Well, we can move on with upkeep, and the next thing that we have to do is remove all of the regular workers from Taipei City. Now, I did say regular, and that's because the chef workers actually stay out here in the city. Now, we can start off by removing all of the non-blue workers, because currently they are the only ones with a chef. And the reason I left these out here for the moment is because at this point, they can leave the chef there, or they can move it to any of the other districts that currently has a blue worker, and then they will remove all of their blue workers. In this case, Blue does want to move their chef onto that spot there, and then all of these workers will be removed. The next thing that happens is we are going to flip all of the lantern tiles in the district over to their yellow border side. You can see up here that during spring they're on the red, then yellow in summer, red in fall, and yellow in winter. So in this way, the districts will provide slightly different varieties of goods from one season to the next. After that, we are going to randomly add in two more Red Lantern districts, and you'll notice we pulled one of each of them off to the side at the start of the game. We can see over here in a three-player game, we are going to add these two districts onto the A spots of the board, so we can randomly shuffle this up and then take the top two. These will be placed down with their yellow side to match that, and they will be randomly placed onto the A spots on the board. Now, they will stay there for the rest of the game. Of course, they will flip back and forth as we proceed through the seasons. You'll note when we start the fall season, we will add the last two onto the B spots of the board. And at that point, no more districts will be added. After that, we can now proceed to the goods income phase of upkeep. Now, the way this works is every single chef currently out in the district will make one of the associated good on its district. So in that case, blue will right now gain one sticky tofu from the supply. In addition to that, if at this moment players have goods on their storage side of their tiles, they will immediately make another of that specific good and place it into their personal area, and they will gain this into their personal area at the start of the next night phase. So when you store something overnight, you actually get twice as much worth out of it. Obviously at this point though, no one has stored anything. Moving on, all players will now activate their trucks, and the number on those trucks will tell them how many goods they can take from the supply in any variety of good types. In this case, yellow can take one from the supply, and they would like to take a sticky tofu. Well, the upkeep phase is done, which means the game now moves on to the next season, which is summer. We can see that the season goal for summer in this game is the player who earned the most money in that night. Moving on to the fall, this benefit will go to the player who has the highest shaved ice signature dish popularity. After that, in the winter, the benefit will go to the player who has the highest overall popularity amongst all of their signature dishes. Speaking of winter, you'll notice all of the attractions just give endgame victory points. Now with that in mind, I would now like to talk about how we will get points once the game is over, and again, the game will end during the upkeep phase of the fourth and final season of the game. Now, each player will gain one point for every 10 money that they have rounded down. They will also get two victory points if they have four satisfied customers in front of them, if they have built out stalls four times throughout the game, and two points if they've hired all three of their chefs. In addition to that, they will gain any victory points underneath their tokens on the signature dish popularity chart, and they will get two points if they sold out all four of the seasons of the game. They will also get two points if they have five of these storage slash delivery tiles on their board, and then, of course, if they've discarded any satisfied customers, they can add those victory points in. Finally, if there are any victory points showing up on the tiles within their night market, they can add those in to the rest of the points that they've gathered, and then we can check to see who has the most points, and that person will be the winner. Well, as I said, the game is now ready for the day phase of the second season of the game, but I think I am now going to bring this tutorial to a close because I've covered just about all of the rules to the game. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Night Market. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.